Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and this is Anglin Escapades. Hi and welcome to the second edition of the Anglin Escapades video diary. Uh, we've had quite a week, Sp uh, spirit in the camp is very high because we're up to four salmon for the, for the year now. Uh, we've had a brilliant week, lots of varied fishing, lots of interesting experiences uh, which I'll tell you all about in a minute. Uh, but firstly I must uh, thank everyone for their support for the first video diary we, we did. People seem to like the concept, the idea of bringing uh, an information hub, a weekly information hub about the why. So uh, thank you for your positive comments, thanks for all those who've subscribed um, and I, I really encourage you to sort of tell your friends and uh, to, to, to spread it around because the more content and the more engagement we get with you guys uh, the better it will be all round. So um, so thanks everyone and we'll, uh, we'll keep it going and keep it as interesting as we can. So uh, the week that's just passed, we started uh, well the end of last week uh, I went out and did some commercial coaching uh, for a guy I've known a long time, Guy Sloan, um, lovely chap. Uh, guy had been out of match fishing for a while and he's come back uh, come back into it, he fished a couple of matches and just felt woefully off the pace and fair play to him, was, uh, was honest enough to admit it and say I need to do something, I've not been good enough. So match fishing is full of, of blaggers and people who will just find every excuse, there's always an excuse why they didn't catch and it was some, something else's fault instead of actually looking at themselves and working out how they can improve. So um, I, hats off to people like Guy and I wish more people were like it. I've always said uh, even as an angling coach people could sit behind me, look at what I'm doing and suggest things that I could do and it just sometimes takes an outward look and someone just take a, you know, a sort of a proper look at what you're doing and you can work together and really come up with some improvements. And we fished, uh, we went to Froggett's Fishery, my favorite commercial fishery, and um, we caught uh, lots of fish and we caught some shallow, which was something that guy really wanted to, to learn and get better at. So um, yeah, we had a great day catching carp and F1s and the sun shone and it was, um, yeah, it was lovely. And uh, I know that uh, the work we did, guy's gonna go on and, uh, and, and win matches and, and do just fine. So uh, hats off to him. And and um, I say I wish more people would, uh, uh, would, would, would look at that and look at uh, match angling from that point of view. So I had a great day with Guy. So that was uh, on the Friday. On the Sunday, uh, I was out salmon fishing. The river had just come into perfect condition. It was the, just the right level. It looked fantastic and I really fancied the chances. And um, I'd been fishing for about half an hour and sure enough, I connected with the fish and uh, I had a bit of an epic battle with this salmon and uh, unfortunately it didn't end well but if you've ever wondered what all the fuss is about salmon and why everybody makes a big fuss about what you know with the way they fight um, just take a look at this video I managed to take while I was playing it Big fish. They really are incredible creatures and when you hook one, uh, the fight is like no other fish I've ever played. And as I say, unfortunately, uh, that battle came to an end after about 10 minutes 
I could see the fish was boring up and down and I generally find the longer you have these fish on for the more chance of losing them and uh, that was the case and it was a big fish the ones you lose are always the bigger ones aren't they but this one was pretty I'm pretty sure it was the biggest salmon I'd have ever caught well over 20 pounds and uh, I was absolutely heartbroken and um, I sat on the bank for five minutes contemplating my life and just trying to get my get my head around it all and then I started fishing again because it was the river was still perfect and there was still a good chance that we'd find another fish and I fished hard and through and just um, couldn't find another fish so uh, I, I sort of went home for a while licked my wounds watch a bit of telly and then I decided later on in the evening to come back down and have another go and I worked through the pool I'd been fishing same place where I would caught the other fish nothing 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 and I just got to the end I was just about to go home and watch the end of the golf and um, I hooked another fish and again another titanic battle and um, it was uh, it was quite a quite a hairy moment because I was praying that I wasn't going to go home having lost two fish in the day and uh, anyway luckily enough this this time I got this one in and this was the result what a stunning fish back you go my friend So there you go, a truly magnificent uh, spring, river-wise spring salmon, around about 20 pounds. I didn't weigh it or measure it, I just unhooked it in the water and as you can see from the film it just swam off strongly and uh, I went home very happy. Uh, if I'd have gone home just having lost that one fish, I don't think, uh, I think I'd have had a terrible week, I'd have been kicking myself all week. So that was a great day, uh, really enjoyed that and uh, off, to, off to a, you know, off, off, got the week off to a, a brilliant start. Uh, Monday we were out with some guests, uh, Les and Barry came up from Kent to uh, chasing these, uh, these spring salmon and um, unfortunately the, the salmon didn't play ball, we didn't catch a salmon, um, you know nothing's guaranteed in this game. We did catch uh, a salmon on our beat that day, uh, Alex Nichols, a chap I fished with on a Monday, uh, a beautiful fish of around £22. So they were there, um, we were just uh, just unlucky we didn't uh, meet one on that day, but we saw a couple of fish um, and we caught a pike which sort of lifted spirits for a while, just something a bit different, but uh, unfortunately no salmon. So that was uh, a bit of disappointment, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the guys will be back another time chasing these wonderful fish. So that was that, and then on Wednesday uh, we travelled to Scotland. Me and my friend, my travelling partner Matt Greening, uh, we travelled up to Scotland to fish a new beat for me, or a new river for me, the River Tay. Um, the River Tay, now I thought this was a big powerful river until I went to the River Tay and that place is just on another level. The volume of water uh, coming through there and just the, the, you know, the topography of the river and the, the way that the, it comes off shallow stretches, a bit like this behind me, shallow water and then all of a sudden it'll just drop off and it'll drop into sort of 20, 26 feet I think the deepest pool there was. Incredible depth, actually quite scary. Um, but because of that the fishing is very, uh, is quite varied. Now we fished the Kirkock beat and this is a beat, uh, quite a famous beat and uh, this is, uh, the ghillie on this beat is a great guy, uh, Gary Harkin, what a lovely guy and uh, just so, so, so welcoming, the hospitality and also getting us fishing. Um, Matt had never been salmon fishing before so it was important that he, we could get him up and running and, and obviously being an angler it's not a problem, he could, you know, he could cast and everything, it was just a case of getting the lures right and got him spinning, he'd spin, I'd fly fish and then we'd swap over and, and Kirkock beat and the Tay I think in general is all about that. You've got to be able to do both to get the best out of the water because some of the pools are just too big for fly fishing. So we fished and uh, unfortunately the salmon eluded us uh, again in Scotland. Um, but it didn't really matter. I just found the place absolutely uh, brilliant, and I just I just fell in love with it there. It was uh, we saw a couple of salmon, uh, but we didn't see the running fish that you really need to see at this time of year if you're going to catch them. So, um, as I say, the the lack of fish, you know, was sort of more than made up for by the the wonderful scenery and the wildlife. Um, there was this massive massive bank of sand martins nesting, literally thousands of birds. Um, that's something I've ever seen before. Uh, one of the guys who we were fishing with had seen an osprey the day before, and that's quite a regular thing, quite a common thing. Um, but the thing that got me was um, was beavers. Um, I'd heard that there was beavers in Scotland, but never sort of experienced them. And um, sure enough, at the uh, at the bottom of one of the pools that we fished, um, there was a big bank, and there's a big big hole in the bank where there the beavers' lodges, and you can see all the trees that have, they've felled, and 
and just walking around and finding little bits of wood with uh, little teeth marks in them from the, from the beavers and the work they've done. Incredible really and I, and I know they're not probably the most popular things because they do, I think they cause a lot of erosion to the banks with their lodges and what have you and that. So I think in the salmon fishing fraternity they're not looked about, looked on very uh, very fondly but um, I have to say I was quite enamoured with them and um, it was uh, it was a new experience for me. So all in all, Kirkock Beat, um, the River Tay, I can't wait to get back, it'll be uh, fantastic. Um, and I say the ri the fishing was so varied, spinning, fly fishing. My fly fishing is still very much in its in, in the novice stages. I'm I'm working hard to get better, but um, I find it very frustrating because most types of fishing I do, I'm, I'm you know I'm fairly adapt at, but that I'm a novice, and and my my spay casting still has the ability just to completely break down in spectacular fashion. But I found the fishing there. Some of the pools were just a dream to fish, and uh, I really sort of came away from it after a couple of days, you know, feeling like I was a better angler for it. So. Uh, yeah, so I can't wait to go back. Um, this time as a change, I mean, you go to Scotland, the drive is always the one that kills you. Um, this time we flew up, we flew from Birmingham to Glasgow and hired a small car. Um, I have to say we had a little uh, Hyundai i10 and um, put the rod racks on it. I thought it looked fantastic with rods on. Um, but I have to say it's a way forward, I think. I think I'll probably do that more often for my future Scotland trips. Um, just need to sort out the way we carry our gear because obviously there's, there's extra costs with extra baggage and that sort of thing and making sure the rods are secured. So um, yeah, all in all, just a brilliant trip. Matt loved it and I'm sure he'll be coming back with me. Um, and um, yeah, can't wait to go back. So that was, that was Scotland. Um, and then we came back and uh, Monday we were out with clients back on the River Wye unfortunately conditions have been a bit sort of it's all gone the river's gone quite low now uh, we had bright sunshine we had that hot bank holiday weekend and uh, I've got to say the river wasn't in its, its best condition uh, and we fished hard again and, uh, and and we saw salmon but we couldn't connect with anything and there was no salmon caught on the beach and, and that was the story for the whole river really and that's spring salmon fishing you know you need uh, flurries of water coming through to keep bringing fish into the system on the tides and um, when you when you go long periods without any rain, then unfortunately we struggle for numbers. So we didn't catch on Monday, um, and then uh, Tuesday I was out, and um, I, do, I, I just went out for the afternoon, and I didn't really expect to catch much, but I thought I'd go and have a go in a few spots where people, a lot of people don't bother fishing, and places where I've caught fish from before, and just sort of just on a just to see if I could find something uh, around. And sure enough, in one one such spot that I tried. Um, I hooked into a, a salmon, not a massive fish, but a fish of about seven or eight pounds. Uh, lovely little fish, and just I was, you know, with with um, with things being so hard at the moment, and not many fish being caught on the river. Uh, for me, that was a real sort of personal achievement. I love that one. So, uh, so we're up to salmon number three for the season. So that was uh, really good, and um, I just fished on a bit for the afternoon, and sort of pretty much had done my work, and just thought I'd have one more last cast or last go in a pool, and. Uh, Lo and behold, another fish. Uh, this time about 11, 12 pounds. Um, quite a fresh fish, actually. Not, you know, it hadn't been in the river too long. So two in the day, uh, four for the season, and um, kind of in such uh, sort of austere salmon times, it's um, we, we fair to say we're flying. So um, yeah, it's been a, an incredible week, and um, exactly what uh, what I was hoping for. So. Um, I think you know now the river has gone a bit low and I think we'll struggle from now on however there's a change on the way I think we're going to get something like it's called Storm Hannah or something lots of wind and rain coming in and that should hopefully bring the river up and uh, we should get some more salmon coming into the system it's not you know if you if you go back over the records and over the years I mean this is really you know the salmon fishing is I suppose you'd say it's poor but but for someone like me who's sort of only you know seen it as it is in its current state um, you know if I catch one fish I'm I'm more than happy and um, I'll keep chasing them as long as they're in the river so um, yeah so we'll, we'll we'll keep going with that and hopefully I say we'll see some more fish in the coming weeks. I must report there's been one rather sad thing that's happened this week uh, just upstream from here there's a place called Bridge Shollers it's where I actually grew up and uh, someone this week has taken it upon themselves to dump a load of uh, building uh, rubble into the river now it's unconfirmed at the moment but it looks like it may well have been asbestos um, it's not confirmed so I can't confirm but either way someone has, has just decided to get rid of this in the river by dumping it over a river bridge um, disgusting behavior and so sad I say I used to I grew up there uh, my my father used to jump in the river with his mates when they were kids and there's a big hole there where it's sort of you know a big swimming hole and we also used to catch fish out of it 
and then if you look over the bridge now it's full of this some sort of industrial waste um, and I say there's talk it could be asbestos we don't know yet but either way um, just who does that and um, there might be a bigger picture here with local authorities you know the cost of getting rid of waste like that these days isn't uh, I know it's not easy but uh, there's a big moral shift between not being able to afford something and dumping it in a river it's just uh, incredible I can't believe um, I can't believe someone would do it. Um, someone knows, someone's had a building demolished or something's gone on, so, so maybe someone might be able to shed some light on it, but um, I, I don't, I doubt they'll be caught, but uh, it would be nice to think that some, in some way they'll get their comeuppance. But uh, yeah, really sad incident that, and um, not, not one we want to see repeated. So, um, as I said earlier, we had, some, uh, we had some good interaction from people who sort of sent a few questions. So, um, we'll sort of answer, go through those and answer those now. Um, the first question I had was from uh, Gary Parnell from the Wirral. Um, he said, do you catch other species while fishing for salmon? Uh, well, yes, we do. And uh, the other day when I had the salmon, um, I also caught two other species. I caught, a, um, I caught a big perch, lovely perch, about two and a half pounds beautiful colour, condition, hadn't spawned yet or anything like that um, and um, yeah lovely fish that was and I caught a pike. Uh, we do catch pike when we're, we're fishing when we're spinning for salmon. Um, this time of year the pike the pike have, have sort of spawned now um, but they're um, you know they're quite active now after that so we, we do catch pike. Um, we also catch lots of trout. Um, one of the most interesting experiences I had on the river was I once caught a trout and on a flying sealer and as I was taking the hooks out as I went to the sort of look of it it was only a trout of about that size and something didn't look right and I looked into the trout's mouth and uh, there was two sets of eyes staring back at me and, and the the trout had obviously been on, on a bit of a, a feeding spree and it had two bleak in its mouth already as well as my flying sea so it was a particularly greedy trout but um, you get lots of little you know trout pulling in another next couple of weeks we're going to see some shad in the river the shad run up the river a bit of an enigma we don't know why they do it i suppose it's to spawn but we don't i don't know i don't really understand the whole cycle of it but we catch shad you're not supposed to fish for them but ultimately they take spinners so you can't help it so they give a little bit of action as well and there's also certain times a year um i, I usually find just before the chubs start to spawn you'll start catching those on spinners as well they get quite aggressive so that's it and my friend tom lane he even caught a barbel on a spinner on the weekend so it just goes to show you you're pulling uh when you're salmon fishing you you're pulling your lures through uh through different shoals of fish and you know the the, the predatory instinct takes over so yes uh, we do catch plenty of fish and and for me it kind of makes the salmon fishing because you can't rely on the salmon to be there that that you know the I say they're not there's not lots everywhere so you know while you're fishing if you're getting a few little taps and knocks and catching an odd fish here and there even though it's out of season you're not fishing for it you're not doing anything any harm I think it makes makes the fishing for me makes it even more interesting so so yeah we catch plenty uh, while we're salmon fishing uh, Pete Jeffries from Newcastle says do you catch sea trout in the river wide um, yes we do I've caught a couple over the years and um, but they're not prolific in the wild You'll, if you catch one it's more by chance you couldn't come here and really target sea trout maybe a couple of stretches um, at certain times of year but it's not like where guys go up to Scotland and they fish at night and all kinds of things and you can actually target the sea trout um, the wild is a bit different you know and I say when you do come across they're beautiful fish lovely fish um, but we don't uh, I wouldn't say it's worth uh, coming here to target the fish uh, Paul Morris from Nottingham says um, have you uh, are there any day ticket stretches available uh, on the River Wye for salmon um, if you'd have asked that question 20 years ago it would have been a hard one to answer but um, yes is the answer because uh, what happened was a lot of these uh, stretches were private uh, with salmon for the salmon you know the good stretches were really private and um, you couldn't get near them but once we had a decline in the salmon stocks uh, they sort of that sort of ended it and then with the advent of barbel uh, the explosion of barbel in the river then these stretches started opening up for day tickets for barbel fishing and as a result now you can fish them for on a day ticket for salmon as well and there's some real famous stretches on this river uh, s famous salmon stretches where you can just you can just fit, you know buy a day ticket and um, and fish these stretches so um, yeah there's plenty of water to go at uh, my advice would be to look at there's a couple of options um, the fishing passport which is part of the YUSC foundation um, 
they do lots of they've got a booking office and you can uh, you can book lots of stretches on there and it's really good they give you the maps and on the maps it usually tells you the pools and if it, if, a, if a pool has got a name it's for a reason it's usually because it was a good salmon pool so um, have a look have a look through there and there's lots of uh, lots of really interesting water to go and fish there and I love going I quite often book a day on a, a stretch that I've never fished before just to see it really because uh, I say there's a lot of them are underfished and especially this time of year there's no there's no course fishing on the river so you can have these stretches to yourself and just have a lovely day in the Wye Valley. Also if you're looking for regular fishing uh, Hereford and District Angler Association it's a great ticket I think for salmon fishing it's about 80 81 pounds for the year and you um, and you catch you know you can catch plenty of salmon there it's not it's not the most prolific uh, but there's there's fish right through uh, places to fish for salmon right through and um, it's it's a lot of water to cover and like I say you know with regards to all the other fish you catch and that there's some lovely places to fish and you usually get a few bites um, so yeah so plenty of plenty of day ticket water to, to go at and uh, um, I've, yeah I've, I've, I've had to say um, there's you know there's, there's a chance of a salmon just right from anywhere really uh, final question, uh, this one was from uh, Pete Millwood and he said, uh, have the coarse fish spawned in the wire yet? Well, um, I can see why you'd ask that question because we've had this hot weather recently, uh, but it's too early yet. Um, I say that, the, the, the pike spawn when it's cold, uh, as do the game fish, but the pike pike have just spawned. The pike we've caught in the last last week or so have had, uh, a lot of them have had chunks missing out their backs and things like that. That's where the males are scrapping over the big females and the females are snapping. Uh, it gets quite aggressive when they're spawning. So they've spawned. We saw some lamprey spawning this week, um, which is always quite interesting to see. Um, but aside from that, the other course fish, chub, barb or roach dace, they've not done it yet. They'll be doing it soon, but I think you probably need another month. And for, like, Usually that first sort of stifling weather we get in May, maybe you get sort of like 20 to 25 degrees a couple of days of that and then they'll switch on and they'll spawn um, but generally the, the, the coarse fish haven't except for the pike so that's it for the questions so as I say we'll keep answering these questions through this uh, through this video diary and um, I say please keep them coming at all the uh, you know all, all the social media uh, the email address whatever however you want to get in touch with us uh, please do so so for the week ahead now as i said earlier we're going to get a storm by the sounds of it this weekend uh storm hannah uh so it sounds like spring and some rain and i have to say we need it um the river's in lovely condition and there is uh, everywhere you look in the in the margins and in the edges there's fry and you're seeing fish topping and they're seeing hatches of uh, different flies and fish coming up to them chub and trout and whatever so the river's pretty pretty healthy at the moment and i don't know if you can see behind me but the the the, the weed is starting to come up because we've had some sun on the water now, the weed starts to come up. So um, that's a good thing. Shows the river's healthy and also it's going to create uh, habitat and shelter for all the new fry when they do spawn. So um, so everything's looking healthy at the moment, but I think we're going to get a rise in, in levels. Um, so uh, that, that'll be good for the salmon fishing. Um, probably bring a bit more oxygen to the water as well. As long as it's not too big, it shouldn't affect um, the, you know, the, the fish that are ready to spawn. So uh, tight lines for the week ahead. And uh, once again, I'm going to go and try and catch another salmon. So uh, we'll see you next week.